Tony, yeah. let's get to the last dance. You've been all hyped about the last dance. In the last dance. On the last dance. The last dance. Here's the situation. So I gotta say, move over Tiger King. Everyone is now talking about the last dance. So we're talking about last dance. Everybody's talking about it. In the absence of games, thankfully we've got this uh, this last dance documentary. I think it's just changed the landscape, Brittany, of how documentaries are actually gonna be done. I mean, it, it, I don't know how you come back after something like this. First of all, how dare you say, if I do watch it, how, what else is there to watch? I mean, this is, this is outstanding TV. It, it was a remarkable night. I, I tried to tell you last week leading up, this past weekend was going to be the best ones. I thought the legacy of Michael Jordan took its biggest hit ever last night. We all kind of agreed, even though it was Michael's decision to let the cameras behind the scenes 22 years ago, it was really up to Michael, but we all kind of agreed to it because we knew we were in the middle of this historic run and we thought, you know what, this would be really cool one day to look back on it. And that documentary is the single greatest thing I've ever watched in my life and I didn't even grow up watching basketball. It is, an, it is extraordinary. It's made me fall in love with being in America. <laughs> uh, this showed not only his artistry, but it showed his humanity. I want to be like, oh yeah, I get it. I'm a football player. I know about intensity. Nah, I don't I don't know what Michael Jordan knows. I don't nah, feel what that. he feels. And I'm grateful mm -mm. for him to, to have done that because it, do, it does seem like it's taken a toll on him and taken a toll on the people around him. But all the rest of us, we've just sat back, enjoyed it, and benefited from it. Okay, Isaiah thinks that Michael Jordan kept him off the dream team. And Michael Jordan looks at Isaiah Thomas as somebody who's not in the league with Magic Johnson and Larry Bird. They don't like each other, to which I say, good. That's fine with me. Man, look, I'm a huge fan of The Last Dance. This is like a, 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 a water cooler moment here in our family. We all watch every single weekend. And what stands out to me is, first of all, he is the undisputed best of all time. Last night's episodes were full of so many moments like that, from him sobbing on the floor in a locker room. Like, I've seen that video, but I've never heard him sobbing on the floor before. And to him holding a baseball bat with a cigar, talking about going into the next game, like, it was powerful. He's being memed left and right. It seems like every Sunday there's a new Michael Jordan meme. I never knew about the Rodman vacation to Vegas. I mean, I got to be honest with you, amongst players in the league, this has got to be the leading discussion today. Does this mean I can go ask for a vacation in the middle of the playoffs and they can give it to me? Or not the playoffs, but the season? Absolutely stunning. And not only that, Phil Jackson called Michael Lynn to ask for his permission. Like, like going to, to dad and asking, hey, can we let him go? I mean, unbelievable stuff. And of course, Michael was right. He had to go get him. And I want to know more about this, the mission to go get him. That's going to be on the cutting room floor. We see Michael Jordan in this docuseries. Our level of appreciation seems to have elevated, obviously, because we're seeing the path that he took, like you said, as he ascended to greatness. Well, you know, the MVP always goes to the guy who had the best regular season. I had the best regular season. Uh, we had the best record in the NBA. Obviously, Michael was a better player than me. But that year, during the regular season, I, was, I played better than he did. When I came to Chicago Bulls, People didn't know what to expect from me. You know, I'm coming in, you know, kind of hot, you know, because San Antonio just, just got rid of me for, for pretty much for nobody. We'll produce straight up. And I'm like, what the hell is this all about? I have said before that interviewing Dennis Rodman is like trying to interview a feral cat. Like he, he just, he's not looking in the same place. He's got those big shades on it. it every other sentence was going back to Kim Jong-un and how he's going to be in the history books. I'm like, no, man, we're talking about the Pistons. Mike said in that uh, interview that he had a competition problem. I bet Mike looks at all those games where he lost. He was like, no, nah, what I had there was a losing problem, right? I think the doc yeah. is, is great go. depending on what era you grew up in. You know, there's going to be so many debates if you're from the Magic Isaiah Bird era, if you're from the MJ era, if you're from the Kobe era, the LeBron era. I think there's a lot of disputes on who the winner is. For me, the undisputed winner of this doc is tequila, cigars, and visine. <laughs> and that run has stuck with me because they didn't know who we were or what we were about as individuals in our family life. So all that whining they did, why well, shake their hand? They were just whiners. They won, they won the series, give them credit. We got old, they got past us, but okay, move on. Do you regret now not shaking their hand? Do you stand by no. that? Well, it's not all good memories, that's for sure. Uh, losing to Michael, especially in 93, was, was pretty tough to take. I had a rough 
few nights of sleep after that Paxson shot. But, um, you know, playing against Michael was also a dream come true. So, the, the, my, and I don't, can't say it's a surprise, but I, I, I feel a little bit like I want to take a shower after watching Reinsdorf sitting there helping focus <laughs> the villain light on to Kraus, who's not here to defend himself. I love it. This is basketball. And I have to be honest with you, in an, in an era now where there is as much camaraderie and friendliness between the players as we see, there's something about this, Jay Williams, that I miss and I still love. Oh, no, Jason. No <laughs> way. Don't try Don't to justify Isaiah. the position. Don't need him. Don't got no. spot for him. No minutes for him. No minutes for Isaiah on this no. team. I absolutely believe that Dennis Rodman changed the Bulls. I love Scotty. But when he said if he had to do it all over again, he would do it? OMG. I would say that the camaraderie of the team, everyone enjoyed playing with each other. Um, it was a great family atmosphere. And I'm just thinking, Stephen, I'm like, how do we let this dude beat us? I can't even front. Someone Did you else. watch the documentary last night? Did you watch the documentary of last course. night? Did you not hear Michael Jordan and everybody talk about how he li he engaged and lifted weights? Uh, it, it, it fuels me, but not to create a tale, a story in my head to go after <laughs> the guy. I mean, that was just crazy to me. It's just everything about this Bulls team was exceptional and interesting and conflicting and, and unique and entertaining because of everything that, that went around in it and before it and after it. I mean, wah, wah. Detroit can't get over it. Get over it. With the release of the Last Dance docuseries, how much pressure do you think is on LeBron now that the younger audience got to get the real deal about MJ? More. It ratcheted up the pressure. He was ascending, and how dare the Pistons act this way? I'm saying the standard ain't consistent. And yet, when it matters, what happens? He's perfect. I thought it betrayed. Uh, giving you giving you the fans a peek behind the curtain. He moves higher. It might not have seemed possible, but in my view, he moves higher after all this. Gee, it summed up everything I've ever heard about Michael Jordan's mentality for me. Like, if you could say a defining moment, we could talk about all of the great shots, all of the things, the cursing the teammates out, making practice hard, the fight with Steve Kerr. We could, we could get all of that in totality and build up this resume of Jordan being one of those uber competitors. That, that last night taught me more about Michael Jordan and his mentality and how he approached the game than anything I've ever heard about him. And uh, so I'm enjoying watching this story like being retold because you, you forget some of the details of how, you know, Mike kind of ascended to greatness. And so that's what I find so really great about, you know, seeing this documentary spread out and done uh, very elongated like it is. Just after seeing those first two episodes, is there any part of you that feels bad for Jerry Krause? No, it is not. Um... I know that he was ridiculed, and I certainly don't wish that upon anybody. Um, but I, I appreciate the fact that while people recognize and respect um, his, his, his skills as a general manager, um, they also reminded everybody he brought it on himself. Watching the, watching the documentary, I, I think it's interesting. It's, um, it's fun. It's entertaining right now, and I think the sports world needs it. In terms of how we felt at that particular times as champions. We were coming down, Michael Jordan was coming up. And in coming up, you have certain emotions. And in coming down as champions, you have certain emotions. And I've said this many a times, looking back over the years, had we had the opportunity to do it all over again, I think all of us would make a different decision. When it was said of him last night, how can you think about missing a shot you haven't even taken yet? That is in its Man. own way. I think one of the more profound statements I've ever heard. I think what has surprised me even in reliving it is uh, the amount of drama that Bulls had to manage. And by the Bulls, let's, we talk about two different teams almost in those six championships. Success is the only parameter that matters and there's nobody who can touch him. So I'm tremendously impressed by his commitment and his sacrifices that he had to make. And and also it's clear to me now that uh, it wasn't an accident that Kobe Bryant um, 
uh, sort of molded his own game uh, according to what he saw in Michael Jordan. Here's what no one has brought up, Max, including you. And I'm surprised you missed this because you're a stickler for these things. When you have the leverage, exercise it. Well, well, first of all, in my opinion, they were the best episodes of the documentary, and that's saying a lot. I thought uh, we were able to see, this was the first time that we was able to witness Michael Jordan getting emotional. Kobe had admired, respected Michael Jordan in such a way that he patterned his game after Michael, right? He's the closest thing, Kobe is the closest thing to Michael that we've seen. You know, I knew a completely different Jerry Krause, and I also knew the softer side of Jerry. So was there a competitive side of him? Yes. But there was also Phil Jackson wanted to get paid the biggest money he did. You had these issues with Scottie Pippen and their battles. And it's just interesting to see how those nuances imploded, essentially, compared to when I came in there. You just felt those hallways were just forever uh, haunted by the unchartered standard of excellence that no team could ever reach. It really gives a very insider's view of, of the game in general, and in particular, what really made Michael Jordan the incredible GOAT of all time. It wasn't simply his jumping ability, it wasn't his speed, it was his mind. He had the most incredible psychological approach to the game, uh, and that elevated him to a level that I don't think will ever be repeated again. But Scottie Pippen looks very, very bad in this docu-series overall. Watching this docu on The Last Dance, and I, I'm very appreciative that it gives us insight to that, it seems like Michael Jordan made stances for things that were pertinent for him. Uh, and, and it's so interesting to me because um, I'm, I'm fascinated by the way he galvanized all of his teammates and the methods he used and how psychologically on point he was and how uh, 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 every single player subscribed to his methods, even though at times his means were questionable. I watch it in pain, Greeny. Went in with the mindset that we were about to, you know, end the career and the run of that great Bulls team and Michael Jordan. This is not the perfect embodiment of exactly what Dennis Rodman was, though, was a complete yeah. wild card. It's the best documentary I've ever seen. The era in which Jordan played and the things that he had to endure on his path to success. Now I understand what they say about his competitive nature. And this is what happens when teams fight and try to find a way to win championships. I'm not condoning it, I'm not saying it was okay, but that's where they were at that moment of time and I respect it. That's what real basketball is. It was amazing to watch and be taken back to that and I think it puts, really, it, it puts in a perfect summation why he's considered the greatest of all time. He revealed himself as the villain by the end because he admitted that um, the economics didn't make sense. They wouldn't have been able to keep it together. Nonsense. Of course you could have kept it together. Here's all the great stuff about Scottie Pippen, all the amazing defensive plays he made, the way he could guard every position just about on the floor. So I, I have some sympathy uh, for Scottie Pippen today. I really do. That the, the, the greatness of Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls wasn't ruined by age or attrition or anything like that. It was ruled by ego. You know, they can see the highlights, but they can't feel his his dominance, and that's what I'm hoping this this documentary really shows. But to have this content right now, imagine T Mac having this content at 14, 15 years old Bro, for yourself. I said it that would to change. My it, I know, oh my I gosh. know, it would have changed. And so I look forward to what it does for this future generation. Yes. That everybody gets a trophy generation. That oh, I want to be <laughs> friends with everybody generation. That is where this is going to have the best impact. The next 10, 15 years, 20 years of basketball, this is the best thing to happen to the NBA because it's going to influence the next generation. Growing up, like you said, I, I kind of grew up after, after all this happened, but for me it's cool to be able to, to listen to the mic speak and, and hear how he thinks. Because he, to me, he was kind of just like a machine. Openness, the willingness for Michael Jordan to go there, to unveil himself, to show you who he was, to show you how his competitive nature uh, reached to every cornerstone of the planet. Uh, I think it was one of the most uh, just moving documentaries I think I've ever seen. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.